Well, I guess maybe I should take out the cardboard. This is my messy. This is a lot more of a struggle than I anticipated today, guys. So you guys know we got a new tractor. Um, what you haven't seen is a whole lot of that new tractor because we haven't used it. I did take the 4-H kids on a hayride last month and we put all in a whole one hour on this tractor. And I promised you guys a tractor tour Tour. So just hold on. It's been Christmas around here lately. Figure out which one goes to which tractor. Okay, so you guys, so excited. Um, we teamed up with Tractor Mat and got tractor mats for um, both my new tractor, the 120, and Jason's 6145. It's starting to be winter time. It's actually pretty nice today, um, but as you guys know, um, it's not always that way in Missouri. <sighs> okay, so I did get the aerator hooked up. I don't know if I'll have time to do it today before I leave, but Jason's probably going to do some aerating. If not, it's ready for whenever I do come back from Nebraska. But we're going to do a tractor tour. We're going to put these tractor mats in because, guys, the cardboard is still in there. I would like to find um, tractor seat covers for both tractors. We use them a lot during the winter time. You guys are not gonna sit there. So this is uh, brand new. It's just got a couple hours on it. Shipped over like 3.6, it's a whole lot. Um, if you guys remember my other tractor, there was a couple of things that shut the door. Um, this one's changed a little bit. I, we, um, ordered the tractor this way, but then once we got the other 120M, it actually had a different, um, setup. If you guys remember right, it had electronics and we tried to switch it. They were more expensive. So we went still with the handle hydraulics, the manual ones like this. It'll be, oh, it's just like Jason's more or less. Um, this is loader ready. It does not have the mounts on it. We don't need it because we're not going to put a loader on it. I'm almost positive. But they, it, it can be, um, it's equipped to be that way. It does have the screen like I'm used to now in, um, but it's not set up. There it goes. I have to get the pages. We'll have to get the pages figured out. That'll be Jason's job. Um, as you can see, none of my monitors, nothing's set in it. Nothing is set up in this tractor yet. So really just have to get it all lined out for hay season. It's a good thing we have all winter. But I'm going to put in um, that tractor mat for this and just get things lined out. And uh, this is the, the new 120M. Turn it back off. She is very, very quiet during hay season. It makes it really nice to be able to hear um, the baler, the nodder, so you can hear it plunge. Makes it a lot easier if you can hear um, what your equipment's doing. I choose not to run a lot of times with the radio on, just
just because one, I'm talking a lot to you guys and I, ju I just enjoy the silence. If I have something on, it's usually a podcast or an audio book or something. Um, I guess we could take some time. I, I know I've shared our story in the past. Um, we have so many new followers and subscribers now, and it's just, it warms my heart so much that you guys come and hang out with us, especially during hay season. That's a, the height of the videos. You know, six months out of the year, we're bailing, raking, mowing. I did it in the opposite order, but you know, you, Jason and I both mow, rake, bale, and then um, we both haul it in. But if you're new here, hay is our income, hay is our lifeline, and we have a coons rake that you can see right here. It's a speed rake, SR600. Then, um, not to get that confused with coons, which is now Norden, um, we have the 15 bale accumulator, which you guys can kind of see right over there. Um, we've had that since 2014. We have the grapple that you guys seen in a couple videos back that helps load hay. But um, hay is our main source of income. And Jason started the hay business in 2007, I think. He was, let's see, I graduated in 08 and he was in 09. So in 07, he would have been a sophomore. And he started his SAE and FFA, which um, supervised ag something. SAE, I'd, I'll double check, but whatever it stands for. Um, he started growing hay on five acres here at the homestead, and it was purely just more or less for his and his mom's, for the, the horses that they had here. Um, he sold a little bit. I think his first baler, he swapped out some, I don't remember what he swapped it out for. I don't know, a couple hundred bucks, 400 bucks maybe. I'll have to have him tell you the story a little bit better, but you know, that's, he came from having a $400 baler, not much of a rake. Um, his first piece of equipment that he truly bought, bought was the tether, I think, and we hardly ever use it. Um, I know that his dad bought the JX that you guys see us run around with the rake a lot, bought that for him. And that was the only piece of brand new equipment they had. Um, we didn't really buy any new equipment except for this accumulator they bought brand new in 2014. And then we um, bought the balers. So we've had two Massey 1840 square balers. This one is on its 19, 20, 21, 22. This will be the fifth hay season next year um, that we have used it. We usually rotate them out, but with the cost of everything and just getting a new one is kind of just, this one's paid for type thing you got to be really um paper money conscious on what you're doing farming as a first generation farm um you got to be able to put the pencil in math i think i don't remember who jason was telling maybe it was um, jared last year when we did the demo with the aerator he talked about if you're wanting to get into farming as a young as somebody young Hay is one of the easiest ways to get in. You can buy a very small and used mower, rake, baler, and be able to do it. Small scale. You don't have to put up 25,000 bales like we do. And actually, that number's kind of dropped. Um, in 19, when I first farmed full-time, well, not even full-time, I was just still part-time, um, but I left my career in finance in 18. So in 19, we had two part-time hired hands that came out during the day and helped us with the hay and I just bailed as needed and whatnot. I really just did the farm wife thing. I did the blog. Um, I rode my horses, traveled, did that kind of stuff. Uh, I think we put up 44,000 that year, but there was four of us. And then in 2020, we decided that Jason and I would just knuckle down and do it ourselves. And the kids were home with us during all that. So it was a learning curve. Uh, we cut down on some ground that we didn't need to travel to and just made adjustments along the way. So that's kind of our, our farm story in a nutshell. I've got blogs on it. I've got posts on it. I've got numerous videos talking about it. Um, thought maybe we would try to do a live at FBN this week. That's where I'm headed. Actually, first thing in the morning, I'm headed out to Nebraska. So really excited about that. That's why I'm just kind of getting some stuff done today. I don't know if I'll even get to this. But...
We've had a lot of comments about the aerator and we just haven't had time and it's been so dry. Obviously we're not as dry as others, but it is, it's dry. So we didn't want to tear up the fields. Not necessarily, I guess that's the wrong word. Um, this breaks up compaction and we didn't want to lose any more moisture by breaking that open if it wasn't going to rain. But now that it's winter time, we want to get these grounds broken up, especially our pasture ground. That is what's most compacted. We actually have, I don't know what the technical term is, a compaction meter. We'll go around and I'll Jason kind of show you it, explain it. But yeah, we're going to put these tractor mats in now that I've rambled forever. So I probably need to get one for the 44 too. Oh, seriously? It's gonna get all hung up in there. There it comes. Look at that dirt, and it's just been sitting. I guess I should have brought the shop back down. I was not anticipating it to uh, have dirt underneath the mat. not gonna work because I gotta take this cup holder off. I'll have to go get a screwdriver for it. But this is pretty much, it's been very easy to put in. It lines up. I just need to get underneath there. Well, I'm really pleased with how this came in. Um, I just got to get a cup holder. I gotta fix that. But real pleased. And I gotta go take that one to uh, Jason's tractor, which is actually at the farm. So I might not actually do that. I might just roll it back up. Uh, S&P, thank you for bringing my baby out. We also have the aerator hooked up. I am probably not going to get to do this today. It'll be here when I come back. But we'll talk about this when we do it. Um, equipment wise, I guess we could just walk around as long as it doesn't get too breezy. We have a Coon SR600 speed rake bought it a couple years ago at an auction. It's been used. It's well loved, but it does the job. Uh, we did try out um, a different style rake at the John Deere um, S&P Heydays. This one works for us. Jason's got to be going fast. That's his middle name, I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure. It's just fast. And this is what works for us. Um, this is my number two tool. Um, this is uh, Coons, which it used to be, is now Norton. It used to be Coons. Now it's Norton. Um, it's a 15 bale hay accumulator. We've had it since 2014. As you can see, it is very well loved. Um, I'm not even going to try to tell you how many bales we've ran through it. Of course, the brand new 6120M. It's my very first piece of brand new equipment outside of the baler. Um, so moving into the hay barns, cause this is like, I'm just going down the line here. We have an Alice Chamber 706 forklift. We use it to stack hay with the grapple. So we actually have two of these bare ones. Um, one for the skid loader, one for the forklift. The one on the skid loader is usually on the wheel skid loader and it goes to the field with us. And then we also have a tie grabber, which I think it's down further. This forklift allows us to go 11 high in the barns. Each barn will hold 6,790, 6,000, I'll have to do the math, but bay to bay, 11 high. Then we have our silage chopper. It's the only uh, row cropping that we do. Obviously not brand new, but it does the job for us. Okay, so let's talk about our skid loaders. We have two, that's right, two. Um, we have a John Deere 333E skid. Love this thing. All right, this is the one I prefer. The other one is um, foot controlled. This one is all joysticks. I don't know what year it is. But it's interchangeable as well. It does have the foot feet. 
we're in the process of moving our shoots, so that's why it's down here. Let's talk about my other baby. So moving across from one hay barn to the next, this is my Massey, 1840. She's a 2019 model. Um, I would have to do the math on her uh, to tell you just how many bales we ran through. This is how many, I'm sure he's not reset it because we just unhooked it and whatnot. She hasn't even been cleaned off for the year yet. As you can see, this is what baleage we did for uh, 2022. This does have the Nodder fan blower. I'm telling you, if you've never had one before, your life will change with it. Um, this is our baler prefer preference. We've had two of these brand new. I run the baler. This is my this is my baby. This is my machine. Um, do I know it down to the tick like Jason? No, but I have learned quite a lot in the last four years about it. Um, we do have cameras. This one is positioned right here, so I can see the twine whether or not it's nodding or not. Um, this allows it to go up the accumulator. I'll show you a picture here because obviously it's not connected, but. Um, this just, that's a process with the accumulator. We have some hay still on hand. I don't know if you guys can see it as well. It is still green. Um, these barns and the way we put up hay, it allows us to have green hay all throughout the year. If we pull out hay, um, you're gonna see it. Let's see, we have lots more stuff I feel like I just, the, the hay is our uh, hay is our income, so that's what we use the most of. That's what I use the most of. I don't do any of the unloading and the loading of the bales unless it's by hand. Um, I just do not feel comfortable enough with the grabbers to do it. I'll, I'll help as needed, but it's not my not my preference. Uh, let's go find the big baler. So this barn is almost nearly empty. It holds the other Heston, the big daddy baler. This is a 7433 cutter from Agco. Jason runs it. I do a little bit, but not nearly enough to justify it because there's a lot that goes on with this thing. The monitor is constantly beeping. This allows for a three by three by eight bale. It does have the preservative tank on it. However, we don't ever use it. We've never used um, the preservative tank since owning this. We got it in 2020. We did do round bales prior to. I hope you guys are enjoying this. The little lollipops. This thing does make um, four strings, two knots on each bale. It's a lot easier when this thing's running to talk about it. Like I said, I don't use it a whole lot. Um, usually when Jason's bailing with it, I'm raking and vice versa. He does all, most of the raking anyway, just because. This barn is nearly empty. Let's see some bales that I've got just kind of strewn around. Here's the other grabber. Probably gonna conclude it for today because I still need to pack and chore and I'm running out of daylight. You guys asked for the equipment tour so really hope you enjoyed it seeing a different different aspect of it. Um, you guys make sure to leave a thumbs up, comment, ask your questions and uh, we'll follow up with this. You guys I'll see you in the next one.